Happy Wednesday, Houdat Nation. We are just over 24 hours away from the start of the 2023 NFL Draft. So I wanted to cook up my final seven-round mock draft where I'm going to break down each of the picks that I think that the Saints should take at all eight of their individual picks. But before we get into that, Mickey Loomis did have his pre-draft press conference, and he did talk about the possibility of trading up. So I just wanted to throw this guy this out here for y'all so you could see what he had to say. He said, for, find somebody you love and go and get them. If you think that you can get them where you're at, then stay where you're at. And that's Mickey Loomis's uh, philosophy on trading up. And he did mention, you know, we have eight picks right now, but, you know, who knows how many picks we're going to have on the back end of the draft once it's all said and done. So, you know, it's just fun little things to talk about. The Saints may trade up. Mickey Loomis didn't shut down the idea of doing that. And then also, they have a history of doing it. So I want you to sound off before we get started on today's video. What should the Saints do on draft day? Type M for move up and type S for stay put. And either way, whatever the Saints do end up doing in the draft, our live chat sports main channel will be live breaking down every single pick of all th or of all three days of the draft. All seven rounds, every single pick, we are going to break down, give our reaction. It's going to be coming on before or the break, the picks will be broken down before ESPN gets to them, before TV gets to them. So be sure to subscribe, lock in our chat sports live coverage of the 2023 NFL Draft. Trust me, you don't want to miss it. It's going to be a lot of fun. So here's just a layout of all eight Saints draft picks. Now you got traded into number 29, or with 229 overall, to get into the first round when you traded Sean Payton to Denver. That pick was also with San Francisco and Miami and pretty much any other team that that you know could have owned that pick has touched that pick. But then you have that number in round two, 40, round three, number 71 overall, round four, 115, two picks in round five at 146 and 165, and then two picks at in the seventh round at 227 and 257. So let's start my final mock draft. And at 29 overall, I selected Mozzie Smith, the defensive tackle out of Michigan. Now, Brian Bercy and Kalijah Kansi, neither, neither of those two players were available. And I could have gone with a Felix Enudike Uzoma or Adetamiwa Adabare or even a BJ Ojolari, but I wanted to go Mozzie Smith because I want to boost that defensive interior. So in terms of scouting Mozzie Smith, he's an impressive athlete and plays with great power for his size at six foot three, 323 pounds. Old boy is big. He also, I love this note about him, had zero career penalties, and he played a lot of snaps. So it's not like he didn't get any penalties but had a limited sample size. He played a lot of snaps, and he, that's pretty solid for a – that's good news for a guy who's 323 pounds. When you're pushing three bills, you know – you're going to get tired. I, I've been a big guy my entire life. I get tired just do, moving around, and I'm not even 250. But he did end the year playing some of his best ball, and he has limited to production and doesn't finish his pass rushes. And that's, you know, something you can notice when you take a look at the stats. He only had half a sack. He only had one forced fumble, only three tackles for loss, but 48 tackles for the Wolverines was a big part of the Wolverines' push at the back at half of the season to get to the college, back to the college football playoff and, you know, obviously lose to TCU, unfortunately, for the Wolverines. But predict it to me, or predict it for me, Houdat Nation, who will the Saints draft in round one? Do you think it'll be a Mozzie Smith? Do you think it's going to be a guy like Darnell Washington, Brian Breesey, or, you know, a wild card like a B. John Robinson or Jackson Smith and Jigba? Let me know, Houdat Nation. I'll be interacting with y'all in the comment section. So at number 40 overall, I had the Saints taking Osiris Torrance. And, you know, I think you could have gone with, like, a Steve Avila. I think you could have gone with another player, to boost that offensive line, but I think that boosting the offensive line is something the Saints have to do in the 2023 NFL Draft. He is mainly a run or a, a right guard, and he's a run blocking mauler. Not m very good in the pass game. He does have great power, and he's not very quick. But the dude is huge. Six foot five, 330 pounds, and in 2022 on 698 snaps. He had zero sacks allowed, zero hits allowed, only eight QB hurries, and an 89.9 PFF run grade with, like I said, zero penalties. So when you take a look at his overall PFF grades, again, 
11 games played, 698 snaps, an overall grade of 88 flat. Pass blocking, not as good at 76.1, but the run blocking grade is elite at just under 90 overall. So, Houdat Nation, we are not going to be live for on this channel for the 2023 NFL Draft, but we will be breaking down all of the picks, giving our grades every day at the end of the draft. And then on top of that, on Sunday, we are going to be one of the first channels to deliver the UDFAs and the list of the breakdown of who the Saints sign after the draft. So be sure to subscribe and turn on your notifications and make sure your noties are set to all. We're going to have the best draft coverage on the internet. I promise you do not want to miss out on it. It's going to be me and it's going to be Abby giving you the best Saints draft coverage. All right, so at number 71, a very popular pick here and the pick that I'm pretty sure I've made every single mock draft that I've you know been a part of. Tajay Spears at number 71, the running back out of Tulane. So three, he is a three down back despite his size. And he is somebody that I really, really am high on. At five foot 10, 195 pounds, he can still do it all. He is explosive and he has big, uh, he is explosive with big play potential and he had phenomenal production for the green wave. And he really is good at making cuts, especially when he's running an open field trying to make a quick move. I really like that. And as I said, he has dual threat ability. He would be a longtime contributor to this offense. And I think that that's something that as Saints fans, we all want. I kind of see... Tajay Spears, not in the same role as Mark Ingram, but being that kind of player where he's a fan favorite, a leader in the locker room, and somebody that the Saints will love to have in that locker room and on that roster for years to come. And the production is just unbelievable. So let's take a look at the next pick. We're sticking in Louisiana. We're staying local. Dorian Williams, the linebacker out of Tulane. And just like Tajay Spears, Dorian Williams was a beast last year. I was a very big fan of Dorian Williams and his production. He had 17 tackles in the Cotton Bowl against USC, and he was able to do that because he has long arms, great burst, and phenomenal closing speed. And he is better in coverage than run stopping, so that is worth noting. He, but in the reads and the anticipation aren't necessarily always there, meaning he knows or he doesn't necessarily know where the ball is going to be he, and not just in the pass game, not just in the run game, but a little bit on both sides. So he could use some work, but I love the Saints defensive staff and I think that they could do a really good job with him. He did suffer a fractured wrist in February of 2023 at the second senior bowl practice. So that is something worth noting. It limited his off or his off season pre-draft process, but in terms of the production and the stats, 132 tackles, nine tackles for a loss, five sacks, seven pass breakups, and two interceptions. Now, the Saints haven't historically drafted a lot of players out of Tulane and out of LSU. So if you want the Saints to stay local in this draft, if you want them to get the homegrown kids, I need you to go type let's go in the comment section and type it with the correct spelling, G-E-A-U-X, because we all know it down in Cajun country, that's how we say it. So... And the next pick at 146 overall, tight end is a need for the New Orleans Saints. I think that you got to bring in somebody to challenge and push Adam Troutman and Davis Allen. The tight end out of Clemson could do just that. He has great hands. He had one drop each of the last three years, and he's awesome in contested catches. Now, he does need to add some weight and add some power, but that can be done pretty easily. And he does not have the best run blocking ability but something that I think is very underrated, zero missed games in college. He stays healthy, he stays active, and he's going to be on the field. And as we say here on this channel, the best ability is availability. So at six foot five, 245 pounds, Davis Allen ran a 4.8440 yard dash. But in terms of the production, 39 receptions, 443 yards, 11.4 yards per catch, and five touchdowns. So I think Davis Allen could be a sneaky good tight end for the Saints. Now, this is an interesting one. I really, really like the pick of Anthony Johnson Jr., the safety out of Iowa State, because I think that safety in DB is a low-key need that hasn't been talked about much in terms of Saints YouTube and Saints media. I think that safety is a bigger need than what we are, you know, what, what we are, you know, crediting it is. Because Tyron Matthew, Marcus May are both great, 
but you need to have depth there. And so Anthony Johnson Jr., he has great burst and explosion, and he added 45 pounds since enrolling at Iowa State, which is awesome. He started at cornerback for his first four years, and then last season he played some nickel and some box safety for Iowa State. And one of my favorite things about him is the coaches are really, really high on him down at Iowa, or up at Iowa State, excuse me. He has great character, he's a great leader, and that's something that Mickey Loomis in today's press conference laid out. There are players that they really like because of the quality production and the quality talent, but they're gonna, they already took him off the draft board because they aren't good leaders or they're not good locker room fits. Anthony Johnson Jr. could be a great locker room fit and a great pr uh, give you great production on defense. 60 tackles, one tackle for loss, one forced fumble, six pass breakups, two interceptions. He allowed only 19 receptions on 29 uh, targets and uh, two touchdowns. So I think that Anthony Johnson Jr. would be an interesting prospect to bring in in the later rounds. So you tell me who that nation. I think the biggest need is probably the interior defensive line or just the defensive line as a whole. But I need you to tell me, what is the biggest need for the New Orleans Saints? Let me know in the comment section. I'll be interacting with y'all down there. All right. So no pick in the sixth round, so we're going to move straight to the seventh. I had the Saints taking Clayton Toon, the quarterback, out of Houston. It's the seventh round, guys. Why not? Your quarterback room is Derek Carr, Jameis Winston, and Jake Lutton. Clayton Toon would be a better QB3 than Jake Lutton. He had great production. He offers some mobility. And he's a good athlete and leader. Again, fits that mold for the Saints. And he can hold up versus pr the pressure. Uh, excuse me. He can hold up versus the blitz and take on pressures pretty well. The arm talent is okay. He had too many just F it, my guy's down there somewhere, which is what I call a YOLO ball. And he has room to grow, which is something that I like for the Saints. Now, out of Carrollton, Texas, he's six foot two, 220 pounds. He ran a 4.64 40-yard dash. And then in terms of the production, 67.3%, 4,000 yards, 40 touchdowns, 10 interceptions, and rushing, 128 carries, 548 yards, and five touchdowns on the ground. All right, so for my last pick, I had the Saints taking the wide receiver out of Charlotte, Grant DuBose. I think that he, again, similar to Clayton Toon, it's a seventh-round pick. Maybe he makes the roster. Maybe he doesn't. But in terms of scouting DuBose, he's mainly an outside wide receiver, and he's solid in contested catches, which is something that the Saints need. He's not a burner, but he had good testing at his size at six foot two, 201 pounds. His 40-yard dash at 4.57. And in terms of his production, 64 receptions, 792 yards, nine touchdowns. He averaged 12.4 yards per tote, and he had a long of 52. I don't think it's a bad pick. Again, it's the seventh round, so maybe he makes the roster, maybe he doesn't. But again, I am all for bringing in wide receivers on top of anything because remember what happened a couple years ago when everyone was hurt. We need depth at the wide receiver position. So here's my mock draft recap. I had the Saints going Mozzie Smith, Osiris Torrance, Tajay Spears, Dorian Williams, Davis Allen, Anthony Johnson Jr., Clayton Toon, and Grant DuBose. So I need you, Houdat Nation, to grade my mock draft and it's my final mock draft the draft is tomorrow we're going to put out one more video about some recent saints uh draft buzz and stuff in the morning so be sure to subscribe turn on your notifications but grade the mock draft a b c d or f y'all stay gold and i hope you're pumped up for the nfl draft we'll see you tomorrow peace